Today is gonna to be awesome because I have a new tool in the shop today and I'm super excited to get to use it. So let's check it out. This is the new Wazer Pro. This is the world's smallest water jet cutter. Now, if a lot of you guys know, I've had the first Wazer desktop in the shop for about four years now, and it's been a really cool machine. So when I heard Wazer's coming out with a bigger batter machine, I knew I had to get my hands on it because you guys know I love my water jet cutters. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little walk around and let you guys follow me set this machine up because I like the nuts and bolts of how a machine works, how it's put together, assembly, what makes it tick, and this machine claims some pretty cool numbers and I wanna know why and how it does it. So I think we should take it apart and we'll look at it and we'll do some test cuts when we get it all put together. One of the first things you notice is Wazer's user manual. Now I'm a guy, I like to throw the instructions away, but Wazer has the best instruction booklet I have ever seen. Out of every piece of equipment that I've purchased or owned, this thing is so nice, convenient, nice color photos. It even has these little QR codes so you can take a picture of it. It takes you to a video. How awesome is this? The pictures in here are so good. I would have no problem giving this to my teenage son and have him set it up. Everything from how it works, diagrams, specifications, filter numbers. Wazer, I applaud you for your awesome instruction manual. So one of the cool things that Wazer also provides is extra cutting beds. Looks like I got four of them here. The other cool thing is look at all the accessories they give you. We got more filters, we got wheels so we can wheel it around, pull it out from the wall, more lubricant so we can change the lube. This is the water sensor. So this goes inside and you set it down and it'll let you know if the water level gets too low or not. A whole bunch of fills, on off valves, a whole bunch of accessories, everything we're gonna need all in a nice little tidy package. An SD card, some tools, some fittings, the on off valves, hose attachments, clips and brackets to attach the drains to the wall. This machine does need to be tied back to the wall, but I will do that after I'm done with this video because I need the machine out so I can show you all the goodness because this machine's gonna be heavy. It's gonna weigh about 800 pounds when it's full of water. And another cool thing, I just wanna show you this. When the machine is on the pallet, check this out. See these ramps right here? You can take this and then you flip it over, turn it around, you got a ramp to drive your pallet jack up, lift up the machine and wheel it into position. Cool feature. It's these little details that I just love about companies like this when they're thinking of this type of stuff. So they have a support structure underneath the machine that I can move it with a pallet jack. Yay, nice thinking. So when I'm ready to go, I can push this back into position. That's handy. First thing I wanna do is pull the panels off so we can take a peek and we're gonna to need to do some inspection according to the instructions on make sure everything's okay. Wazer wants you to get in here and check for shipping reasons. Some of these are bolt-in, some of them are screw-in. Now the one thing you'll notice about this footprint compared to the other machine is that the motor, pump, and everything is all underneath of it and it's integrated into the machine compared to the other separate unit which ends up living underneath the machine anyway. One of the things I love about Wazer is their fit and finish. Have all the parts and components look like they belong together. Very well designed. Easy removable panels. They've been able to cram a lot of things in a small space but still make it easy to work on. So looking over the entire machine with all the panels off, it looks like everything's okay. I just have to make sure I turn my power button on right here. Everything looks good. So I'm reading over the spec sheet. This thing says it will cut almost four times faster. So I'm looking in here and I see why it can cut faster. We have a bigger pump, we have a bigger motor, and we're now upgraded to 220 power instead of 110 like we had before. I noticed that the garnet hopper is bigger than the previous version. This is gonna give us longer cutting times. So that's a great feature. So we have a bigger abrasive hopper inside. Oh yeah, these are much bigger. These are the waste hoppers for collecting garnet. The garnet recirculation is just how the garnet moves around and then gets back into these tanks over here to be removed. Supposedly that's an improvement, so I can't wait to check that out. Look how big the tub is. This is full of water and this is what absorbs the cutting energy. So this tub has to be really big. They do not want the cutter to cut through the bottom of the floor. So this is another change to this unit over the desktop. It looks like they've added some magnetic drain filters, which is fantastic. So to get this thing fired up, we need a drain and we need water feed. And I'm lucky right here because I have a little water spigot. This end goes to the spigot, this end like this. And it looks like they've included a sprayer for the front of the machine. Look at that. 
Man, this thing's high quality. It's heavy. Gotta install this. Obviously this gets tapped into the back water line, but I was like, where does this thing hook? Where does it belong? And then I found this in the box. This is a magnet, a little hook on here. And it looks like it just goes like that anywhere you want. And then you just hang it up. It goes anywhere I want it to goes. <laughs> the drain needs to go into a sink or into a floor drain. And then all we have to do is plug it into 220 power. And there we go. Fill it up with water. It's gonna take 40 gallons to fill this tank up. So we're gonna be here for a minute. Looks like we got our water filled up. Let's put some garnet in it. This is what does all the cutting. We have two buckets to get us started. This is the same stuff I run on the Mach 500. Same from Barton 80 mesh garnet. This is a hard granular. If you were to look under this under the microscope, it's gonna be really jagged and sharp. This is 80 mesh and you can get different sized granules. And depending on what you're after, you can get fine, you can get coarse, but I think Wazer suggests the 80. What you can do is you just get a scoop and it loads right here in the side. You wanna make sure to use these screens because you don't wanna get something stuck into the nozzle and have to unclog it. So don't remove these little filters. What goes in comes out the other side. So as we fill this up and this gets used, those tanks that I showed you earlier collect all this and then we discard it. One of the most common questions is, can you reuse the garnet again after you've captured it? And the simple answer is no, but there are ways to repurpose it. You could use it in a sandblast cabinet, but realistically you just throw it away. If you're going through a large amount of this at a time, they do make recycling machines. So we're ready for a test. And one of the things that I love about this machine is that it can take smaller pieces of material and utilize them better. So on the Mach 500, it's like taking a Kenworth semi-truck to the grocery store, firing up a 50 horsepower motor, and then making small cuts. It's a little extreme, where this machine's really handy for small one-off parts. This isn't excessive, and I really like how easy it is to fasten the material to the build plate. And all you need is a couple screws like this. I like these little self-tappers with a big head on them and just a screwdriver. All you gotta do is just find a hole and just tighten it down, lightly wedge it against the material there. There you go. The material's fastened down and it's much easier to fasten smaller parts and pieces in this machine than it is the Mach 500. Put the card in, select cut file. From here, we can choose some of the pre-saved files to do some tests, or I've already made a quick test. All right, loaded a file in and it's gonna home the machine into this corner. And now what I gotta do is move the cutting nozzle over to this coordinate right here. This is zero, zero. And now we set our tool height. This is the cap that goes on the top, lift it off, and we lower the head manually down onto this cap, turn the knob, and that little detent right there sets the nozzle. Then we put the cap back and we uh, say this is our new origin in the machine and then we cut. So what I wanna do is I wanna cut a two by two square and then we're gonna measure it and see how close we are. And then we can adjust our offsets in the machine to get it as close to the parameters that we're looking for. Got our program loaded in, we got our origin set. Now from here I can choose to do a dry run, which is just a practice to see if this is where I like it centered on our material, or I say we just go for it. So all I gotta do is hit OK, cut material. It's gonna tell me to close the door and then hit start to go. Three, two, one, let's go. While this is cutting, you guys always ask me how fast can this thing cut? Well, it really depends on the material thickness. It can cut half inch aluminum at just over one inch a minute and quarter inch aluminum at two and a quarter inches per minute. Quarter inch mild steel at 21 millimeters a minute. Eighth inch mild steel at 39 millimeters a minute. That's pretty awesome. So here's some quick specs about it. It's 2.8 horsepower, empty weight, it's 380 pounds. And when it's fully loaded, it's 780. It has the same 12 inch by 18 inch cutting area. The kerf is 44 thousandths. It runs on regular tap water and all you need is a water drain. It runs on 230 volt power and overall it's about the same size footprint as the desktop version. It's just in a more self-contained unit. So another cool feature as this is cutting, 
This tells you the pressure of what the pump's creating. This is a neat new feature that they didn't have before. So have you noticed how quiet it is? The Wazer Pro has a submersible cutting option. You see how the nozzle is underwater? This reduces the noise that the jet creates. So there's a little switch on the side that you can select to have it be submersible cutting. Okay, it's done. And as you notice, the water level is gonna go down. I'm gonna lift the lid and it's gonna drain. Boom, pump is stopped. And now what I can do is hose everything off. That was just a few minutes. What we do is we raise the nozzle up, take our part out, and we're left with something like that. So in the program, I can select a tab. I can have starts and stops. Generally, it's good practice to have your parts tabbed so they don't flip up on you, but you can see they come out pretty easy. Take a little bit of cleanup, pop these out, and we have a two by two square. Let's measure it. Okay, so we're a little bit undersized. And that's okay because inside the program, we're able to adjust where the cutting nozzle is. You can cut on the center line, or you can cut left, you can cut right, and then we can tell it how big of a diameter the kerf is. Much like we have our uh, offsets incorrect in the program. So the inside dimension is too big, and the outside dimension is too small. So let's go make an adjustment. Round two with a different offset. Here we go. I'm sure you're wondering how I got a cut profile. Well, I used a program called WazerCam, and it's so easy to use, it walks you through every step along the way to get you to cut. First thing we need to do is select a file, and then we can scale and position our part in the software. And then we can go down and select our material thickness. And WazerCam has an assortment of profiles already loaded up, or you can create your own. And then we can select our cut path. Do we want center, offset, inside? We have a lot of selection here. Then we can select our tabs and leads or eliminate them altogether. Then we can select our cut quality. And this is how nice the cut edge looks. And then once we select that, it will tell us how long it's gonna take and estimate how much garnet it's gonna use. And then from there, we save it and bring it to the machine. All right. Let's see what we got here. I do like this little squirter. What a great improvement. Let's measure this one. Ooh, much better, I'm within five. This side's off a little bit. The inside dimension's in a few thousandths. I can continue to sneak up on this to literally dial it in. This is why I love water jet cutters, it's so precise. And once I get the offset set, I don't have to change it again. But this is just something plasma cutters struggle with is getting precise parts like this. Pretty cool. So the question that everybody asked also is how much garnet did this use to cut this? So this said it was gonna take 1.23 pounds of garnet. Let's see what that looks like. 1.3. So that's how much garnet that used to cut that part. Pretty efficient. A couple other things I wanna check out is our traps here. Let's see what it looks like. Very little in there. Most of it's settling at the bottom of the tank for right now. So now that I got the machine dialed in, I actually have a good project for it. A lot of you guys know I'm working on a sci-fi inspired office space and I need to cut some little lenses that are gonna go into a little piece of greebling that's gonna look like a controller for our star map that we're making. And then these are gonna go around the TV screens that we're building in the office. This is a piece of polycarbonate and I need to cut a whole bunch of little tiny hexagons and squares. Now, if anybody ever has tried to cut hexagon, it's not a shape that's really easily created. And polycarbonate really doesn't like to cut very well with a scoring knife. This is something a plasma cutter can't cut, but the water jet is gonna be perfect for this application and it should only take a few minutes to do this. We're gonna screw it in and then we're gonna get cutting. One of the main reasons why I like having this water jet here in the workshop is that the Mach 500 is sometimes doing production runs and it can be running for weeks at a time, which makes it so that I can't use it for small projects. So that's why I like having the Wazer here, is that it allows me to still prototype, make small parts and pieces while the Mach 500 is doing its thing. Look at that. So this took about nine to 10 minutes to cut all this. So you're probably asking yourself, Jason, how come you don't outsource all your water jet cutting? And the simple answer to that is, it's expensive. It's about $120 an hour. So I can save a lot of money doing it in-house. 
And I can charge others when I'm not using it too to do water jet cutting. So this is a cool little small business if you think about it. I know you guys are gonna have more questions. So what I'm gonna do is open a forum post at the Fireball Tool website and you can ask me any question you want about this machine. I'll gladly help you answer there. And I know the guys at Wazer will also gladly jump in and help too if there's any questions you guys have about this new Wazer Pro. They did a great job. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.